You're watching CW Montana. This is the MTN 9 o'clock news. And good evening. Thanks for joining us on this Tuesday. I'm Andrea Lutz. A lot developing across the state of Montana tonight, including this of Montana family taking the FBI to court after they say the agency discriminated on race, denying their son justice. We have the details. Plus, funding is approved to keep floodwaters at bay in Lewis and Clark County. We're going to tell you more about this million dollar plan. It's all coming up. But first, we do begin with our Rob Griggs. Yes. Uh, a Hello lot there. of just <laughs> crazy weather, well, summer weather across we, the state. We've had a busy day, yeah. Andrea, across the state from western to eastern Montana. The good news is the severe weather didn't really pan out and materialize, and so we're really thankful about that. But let me show you what is going on out there right now. Plenty, and this has been the case. Uh, pretty much all day started this afternoon out in eastern Montana, southwest Montana, picking up all kinds of uh, different showers and thunderstorms. And although we haven't had any severe weather in terms of reporting large hail or, uh, you know, uh, big reports of damaging wind, you can see with the current dew point numbers right now, anything north of 50 degrees is conducive toward more thunderstorm development. So we still have some more weather to go tonight. But just to show you what we didn't get, here are some of the typical hail sizes that we talk about with severe weather when you get over an inch in size. And we really didn't see any anything over an inch in size on the storm reports so far. So in uh, many respects with the severe weather we had concerns about, we dodged a big one. We will take a look at the statewide forecast, including the 4th of July forecast in just a little bit. Andrea. All right, Rob, thanks so much for that. OK, well, moving on, a Montana family accusing the FBI of failing to properly investigate the death of a Crow tribal member. And today, quite a show of support in a Helena courtroom as a lawsuit looms. The family of Stephen Bear Crane claims the FBI discriminated because he was native. In 2005, Bear Crane was shot and killed at a ranch on the Crow Reservation. A grand jury declined to prosecute the man who shot him, saying the shooting was self-defense. Bear Crane's family argues investigators didn't examine evidence well enough was how the case started and the investigation proceeded um, to an inevitable conclusion when you start with the stereotype that um, Stephen Bear Crane was responsible for his own death. It's important that someone recognize that this is happening and until people recognize what's happening on reservations to Native Americans, nothing's going to change. The judge didn't make a decision on that case during today's hearing, but we'll let you know what happens next. A Billings businessman who is facing wire fraud charges in New York State for defrauding $43 million from banks pleads guilty. 47-year-old Todd Kapser changed his plea in a New York federal courtroom. Kapser faced three federal charges, including conspiracy to commit wire fraud, wire fraud and identity theft. Capser is accused of defrauding a dozen banks across the country in a scheme to buy oil tankers through a Canadian loan. Capser will be sentenced in November. New details tonight on what led to a trailer home getting blown off its frame during an early morning explosion. All of this happening in Missoula. Fire investigators say the fire started in the oven and then ignited butane. That's what caused the explosion. A neighbor said she woke up to the sound of the explosion, then banging on her front door. An injured man appeared to have his hands melted off. Now officials will determine if criminal charges could follow in that case. After a recent shooting in Pioneer Park in Billings, folks are now questioning the safety of Billings Parks. Billings police say newly created parks officers making all the difference since there's been a 33% reduction in calls to the park. Still, things like drinking in the park happen and they're watching homelessness also. I'm not sure if some of that had to do with the construction. It was a little harder to access in some of those nooks and crannies up in that area, but kind of in the downtown central area, the parks that border that area were having probably the most issues. All right, and Billings police say the public reporting suspicious behavior in the parks helps to make their job a little bit easier. <laughs> Following a collision with another ship in Canada, the USS Billings is moving through seawaters once again. Well, that incident happened on June 21st. The ship continued its journey yesterday, leaving Montreal just after 9.30 a.m. The cause of the incident still under investigation, but the ship is set to be commissioned still in Key West on August 3rd. A major flooding mitigation project to help keep water away from the Helena Trap Club is moving quite along. As Lewis and Clark County say they have picked a contractor for the work, 
The $1.4 million project goes to a boulder company. And the plan will add 14 culverts to divert water away from the pit at the Helena Trap Club. And it would also lower and widen ditches and rework Rossiter Elementary School's parking lot. Funding is coming from FEMA. We need to keep working uh, forward uh, to make sure that those, uh, those flood effects are mitigated as far as is possible. But there will always be flooding there. There has been flooding since Noah. Rivers go riv where rivers go, mm -hmm. as do creeks. And so what we need to do is to mitigate the effects of, uh, of the flooding as best we can. And this is a very key part of that process. All right, flooding a big concern in the area. Emergency officials say nearly 600 families are affected by flooding in the Helena Valley every single year. Well, the new Great Falls School Superintendent says that his first 90 days will focus on working with staff and hearing new ideas as he starts his role. Tom Moore took over for Tammy Lacey, who retired this summer. Moore toured schools and checked in on the construction progress today. He's worked in education for 38 years, previously as the assistant superintendent. Getting to know those people and what their issues and concerns are and engaging them and understanding that uh, they're very much a part and a vital part of our organization and helping kids, students thrive in our, in our school system is their responsibility as well as mine. All right, Moore's contract with the school district is for two years. Gallatin County Commissioners say their budget is tight. But despite that, they say county employees are slated to get raises. County leaders anticipate spending $159.9 or $156.9 million because of the area's massive growth. The county is going to have to hire 14 full-time positions. Seven new positions will go to the sheriff's office. And as far as those raises, that cost roughly going to cost $900,000. Last year we gave our employees a 6% a raise. That included cost of living and merit increases and that type of thing. We did that 3% on, on July 1 and then another 3% on January 1. So those dollars have to be figured out into our preliminary budget. And recently the city of Bozeman passed the largest budget in their history. The community can weigh in though. There's going to be five different budget hearings before they try and finalize that budget, which is supposed to happen in August. Well, there are some new changes to the way that folks are going to vote in Lewis and Clark County. This is commissioners decide to take away party affiliation off the ballot in a nonpartisan election. All candidates for office will file for a single primary election. If enough candidates take part, a primary is held and the top two finishers move on to the general election. The option is going to be on the November ballot. After decades in the making, leaders dug shovels into the ground as construction of the new Butte Veterans Home begins. Local, state, and federal leaders, including Governor Steve Bullock and Senator John Tester, gathered for that ceremony. The home will cost $10 million, serving veterans in southwest Montana. The 60-bed retirement home was first proposed back in the 1990s. It was important to Butte. Butte had worked on this for decade after decade after decade. In the end, we got her done. And we got her done because Butte, they go to work when the going gets tough. And the home is expected to be complete by the fall of 2020. All right, well, the future of the Anaconda Job Corps is pretty bright after what could have been a pretty dark time. Members came together at an open house to reflect on a recent decision to keep the center open after it almost closed this year. MTN's John Amy shows us how members celebrated. The Anaconda Job Corps Open House is an annual event, but this year it was more special. Last May, the career training program was set to be closed. Some Job Corps participants heard the news just before going off on training. We wound up hearing about how the center was closing before we left, and we're like, ah, oh, well, this is, this is such a bummer. Outcry from the community and work from U.S. Senators Steve Daines and John Tester helped reverse that decision and the job center will remain open. Participants celebrated the good news. 
It's definitely a good program for people who are trying to find themselves in a way, you know, like if college isn't best for them or they want to get out and, and work or find new things about themselves. We have trades here. Senator Dane said a phone call he made to President Trump helped get the decision to close reversed, and he's delighted it will remain open. It's, it's an emotional moment because there was so much at stake here. We're talking about the lives of these young people, and this is giving them hope. It's giving them second chances in life. And the young people involved in the Job Corps program say it's not only taught them an important trade, it's also changed them for the better. Before I got here, I was not motivated at all. I didn't know what I was going to do in my future or school-wise, and I wasn't really that excited about the future, but Job Corps definitely has me excited. In Anaconda, John Amy, MTN News. And the Job Corps also employs about 70 people in that area. Well, still to come on tonight's MTN 9 o'clock news, one of the best ways to get around Glacier National Park, taking a tour in those famous Red Jammer buses. So we're going to introduce you to a man who's been driving one for 15 years. Plus, Rob, he's got your weather.